Yes, I know. Let's not leave it all in the gym. Trev, let's, uh, Trev, we've heard earlier um, your story about drowning mice as a child and then showing them to a vicar to get some sort of thrill. <laughs> Last week you were boasting about <laughs> stamping mice to death and how you count and you <laughs> just gloat over the body. Anyone who's just joined the show, that's, that's not true. That's an exaggeration. Next week, Trevor, let's try and not have any mouse-related <laughs> item to Or do torture it. of animals. Any, I'd be glad to. Just be glad to. What's the pike in the bath story, Trev? When my mum was in hospital in 1988... Don't me, always me use my mum was in hospital, so that we think, oh, poor Trevor and his ill mum. Because, frankly, they, we don't care anymore. All we want to know is why you're so cruel to animals. It was my turn to cook dinner. Me and my dad used to take turns in cooking dinner. Ah, uh, how old were you? It was half term. I was 13 years old. You shouldn't have been cooking at 13. I know, but I had to. It was that. Particularly as his main was dish was mouse flesh. flesh. <laughs> 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 what so, is it for dinner tonight, Trevor? We're going to be eating a rat, father. Will you kill it first? No. The, the act of eating it will bring about its death. Come now, on, listen, it was half term, so I went fishing with Chris Hollis. And we caught. We don't all know who Chris Hollis is. Is a, a person I knew at school. Is that that fellow that used to touch you? Yes. Not in a. In, what sort of way was it? I used to do something a bit I weird. I don't want to go down there. Um, <laughs> well, he did, didn't he? <laughs> no. What did he do? You can't just leave that hanging. Stop he didn't it. leave it hanging. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. He swung off it. Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he now, is Trevor as a clam in front. One anecdote at a time, please, gentlemen. But Trevor, you've got to clear that up because people. Later, will that'll be another topic. That'll be another well, subject. Because yes, now people will be topic. worried about Chris Hollis. Just, just say, oh, he, he was if people want to know, they can email the show in, and I'll in, respond. <laughs> you can email, email the show, show in. What they can record it. Record the show. Listen to this. You maniac look. Come, let's hear this story. I caught a listen. pike, okay? A pike is quite a big fish. What, for and your family? To, well, no wonder your mum was ill. <laughs> <laughs> I caught food, the pike I and I thought, oh, it's my turn to cook. I've stayed fishing too long. I know what I'll do. I'll cook the pike. You can eat pike. Tomorrow it's blue tack. So I came back with the pike. <laughs> I knocked the pike over the head and uh, brought it back. You knocked it over the head? Okay, trying to skim yeah, just, past that detail. What did you hit it on the head with? Uh, it's, it's, ironically, it's called a priest. It's a piece of wood and fishermen call it a priest. I knocked the pike on with the priest, came home, what? my dad came home from work and he said, have you cooked dinner yet? And I said, no. And he goes, well, leave it, we'll go and visit your mum and then we'll come back and have it. And Why I are said, you getting in that voice? You said bitter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it. <laughs> it's an older man. Trevor. <laughs> and so what he said, well, I said, dad, I've caught a pike, we're going to have pike for dinner. Um, what shall I do? It won't fit in the fridge. This and he is nothing said, like my life. It's like Huckleberry Finn's life, isn't it? I can't even relate to this. <laughs> then we got on a raft and we sailed off and we had a freed slave with us. It's nonsense. Got he it. said, run a bath and put the thing in there to keep it but fresh. But you'd already put... struck it on the head. I know, but he said, I know it's dead, but he said, put cold water in there, it'll keep it fresh, otherwise it'll go off. So <laughs> I put cold water and some ice cubes in the bath. Why didn't you just put it in the fridge? Because it doesn't fit in the fridge. How it's big a... is this fish? Like that. Oh yeah, that's, that's good. good. Like good a radio. It's a it's two foot long. Two foot. We go and visit my mum. We come home from my mum and I knew something was wrong because my dogs were really agitated and frightened. I'm sure they were the old time. They've got animal torture living in the house with them. I bet they didn't rest for a second. And I give them a little knock with the old priest. <laughs> so I give them a knock with a priest. That calmed them down. <laughs> then I made one wear a bra. Can I stress that I'm an animal lover and that this was... I don't <laughs> like killing animals. I don't, I don't like killing joking, dear. Tell us this story. So I can hear a banging sound in the bathroom, and I think, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you think, oh, no? Oh, no. Why didn't you think, what well, have I done to deserve this? Because well, that comes later. I just felt, oh, no, at this point. <laughs> I go into the bath. The fish has only gone and come alive again, hasn't it? Oh, it's come... It came alive it's again. It's come back. It was I'd a Lazarus fish. The this priest had just stunned it. It was alive and flipping around in the bath. It's a big, you know... So that had scared the frog. Yeah, so my sister then goes in there, takes pity on it, and she starts... <laughs> <laughs> she takes pity on the fish. She oh, goes there and take pity on that fish. We're emotionally disturbed because our mummy's in hospital, so she goes in Don't there and mitigate start, it. She starts dropping peanuts in to feed it. I said to Dad... It's not going to help him. My dad says, where's dinner? Hurry up with the dinner. I said, Dad, the fish has come alive. What am I going to do? He says, you've got to kill it. You have to kill it. And, uh, you have to kill the fish. What were you, what were you said, thinking Dad, while I can't kill it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were thinking, I Trevor. I was hungry. I didn't want to do this. 
So he w he refused to kill it. He said, "You've got to go and do it." He gave me a proper hammer this time. He said, "Don't muck around." Why with did that. you don't make you do it? Because I don't know. He, he, he so you'd he, learn. It was my turn. Trevor, it was, did it, this ever happen? It happened. It's a well-known sort of family legend. I go up there. <laughs> my sister. It's a well-known fable in our home. My sister. Uh, I had to be dragged out of the bath. I had to shut myself, lock myself in the bathroom, and I had to drain the water out of that bathtub. Climb in the bathtub with this fish wriggling between my knees and then I had to pick up the hammer my sister is banging on the door screaming at me she's given it a name at this point what is the name I don't know what it's called come on true give I, it a name it's in there it's in your mind and she she's banging on the door screaming I'm a murderer don't kill I've got Leroy <laughs> clinging to my little <laughs> legs and and I'm banging bang 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 eventually and what were you thinking <laughs> Oh, I, was I was thinking, do it the other one. I wasn't thinking that at all. I was no. close to tears. I was, it was... I know what you've done to deserve this, Trevor. You caught that fish, you put it in the bath, you suggested that it was the meal, you eat it with a priest. Your dad's role in this story is very bizarre. He goes, what's my dinner? Come on. <laughs> no, we're going now. Kill it with a hammer. It's just... My... This sounds like a dad from a fairy tale. Is your dad a my baron? Dad? Do you mean the bad voice in your head? <laughs> Is that what you call dad? Daddy made me kill my daddy. They're going to make a film about you one day, Trev. And I, I think it'll be along the lines of Psycho. I think, yeah. Should we listen to the Rolling Stones happy to just try and drag just us out of the quagmire? ourselves of all this. If you want to try and answer uh, Trevor's sonic enigma or try and unravel some of the riddles of Trevor's past, text us on 64046 or email the show at russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. But for now, let's listen to Stones for heaven's sake. I like it. Why won't you give me your love by the zoo on there? I like that. I like the video of it. I like the whole thing. I like the fact that that <laughs> saxophonist goes out with the other lad, Sean. There's a romance really in the song. We met them. We really yeah. nice people that lot. She doesn't play sax on that record, does she, much? I don't know, don't she? I don't hear much mm, sax on Yeah, I think there's some saxophone, Trev. I think you've just been omitting it from your mind, probably because you're a bit sexy. She sexist. does other stuff, though, doesn't she? I does don't she? know. Does yeah. she? Maybe. Listen to this. Uh, we've got a text message here. That fish killer household is like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Imagine being a neighbour. That's what people think of you. Our neighbours were very supportive and really good to us. I probably lived in terror they of you getting all your hands on their family pets. Too many bones in pike. Poles eat pike on Christmas Day. That's like a haku. <laughs> nice. Someone here guessing that your Sonic Enigma trip is This Night Has Opened My Eyes by the Smiths. 